Chapter 6, Crispy Corn Dog. At the end of fifth grade, there was a formal graduation ceremony. Everyone got dressed up and parents came and took pictures. We even got a diploma with a ribbon around it. Afterward, my dad, my mom, her boyfriend, Ben, and I went out to dinner at my favorite Mexican place, a hole in the wall where they give free refills of chips. No offense, Ellie, Ben said while we waited for our food. I think it's a little ridiculous to have a graduation for elementary school. <clears throat> ben doesn't say much, but when he opens his mouth, it's always interesting. I think it's nice to celebrate their achievement, my mother said. Ben chuckled. <laughs> Getting through elementary school is hardly an achievement. Now, middle school? That's a different story. My father grimaced. Ugh, they should give you a medal for surviving that. At the time, I didn't understand what he meant. But I do now. Middle school is like one of those highway restrooms in the middle of nowhere. It's dirty and smelly. It's crowded with strange people. By the time I graduated from elementary school, I knew everyone. I had watched them grow up and they had watched me. We knew who'd bought their pants in kindergarten, whose father always screamed too loud at the coach during t-ball games. We had no secrets, and it was comfortable. But in middle school, there were so many new kids. Some seemed like they were from different planets. Like the goth kid. He's always in black. Pants, t-shirt, thick jacket, heavy Doc Martens. He has a pierced ear, eyebrow, and nose. He must set off metal detectors in the airports. Then there are the two girls who dress like twins even though they're clearly not. They wear the exact same outfit down to the same socks. I've heard them talk in the halls and they finish each other's sentences. I go through the hot lunch line and look around for where to sit in the lunch court. We don't have a cafeteria. We eat outside with seagulls hovering overhead. They've been known to swoop down and grab fries off of trays. The girl who's my lab partner in science has an open seat next to her. Her name's Momo and she went to a different elementary school from me. But then I see Brianna, and she's with a bunch of girls from the volleyball team. The seat across from her is free, so I slide in with my bot lunch, a crispy corn dog, and potato wedges with orange slices. You cut your hair? I say, surprised. Brianna's hair has always been long like mine. We got bangs at the same time, third grade. We even pool, pooled our money together so we can buy cool ponytail holders with glittery bows and neon feathers and rainbows to share. But she won't need those now. Her hair has been chopped short into a sharp, angled bob right to about her chin. I'd never be able to pull off that sleek haircut. My hair's way too crazy. It's easier for volleyball, she explains. She looks pretty, but she doesn't look like Brianna. I point to my lunch. Look, a crispy corn dog, I tell her. She snickers. It's an inside joke. We both love corn dogs. We even made up a commercial featuring the crispy corn dog. I say my part. You can do anything with a crispy corn dog. It slices. It dices. Brianna chimes in. The crispy corn dog can fold up into a blanket. You can nap on it. We get more and more ridiculous. It writes book reports. It makes dogs meow. We laugh, and it almost feels like old times. I hold out my crispy corn dog. You want half? She hesitates, then gives a little shake of her bobbed head. Coach is really on our case to eat healthy. Do you want to sleep over Saturday night? I ask her. She looks uncomfortable. Tournament. Right, I say. I remember that time I went fishing at summer camp. I didn't catch anything, no matter how many times I threw my line with the worm in the water. I listen as they talk volleyball. They think the coach is tough. Some girl named Serena works, needs to work on her serve. The hotel they are staying with that they are staying at this weekend has a pool. One of the girls abrupt, stands abruptly with her tray and says, we don't want to be late. Late for what? I ask Brianna. There's a meeting about our team fundraiser, she explains. A bake sale. Bye, I say, but she's already gone. I stare at my corn dog and wonder if I'm the stupid worm. A tray smacks down on the table across from me. Can you believe this? My grandfather demands. He's wearing a navy blue polyester pants, a button-up shirt with a tie, and a v-neck sweater with his tweed jacket. He definitely stands out fashion-wise. Three dollars for a school lunch, he says. This is a bargain. He polishes off his corn dog in a few bites and then looks at my untouched lunch. Are you going to eat that, he asks. Crispy corn dog. It makes you young again, I joke. What are you talking about? I sigh and push it over.